So today we're going to learn how we can always make sure our passwords are hashed within our database so that they're not actually stored in plain text on our user. Now, in most cases, within the typical flow of an Adonis.js project, you're actually going to install and configure the auth package, and the auth package configuration process will take care of this for you if you have it instantiate the user model uh, for you. In our case, we created the user model ourselves, so this is something that's on us. We need to make sure that we take care of it ourselves. So for this, we're going to be using a decorator hook. Uh, these are covered within the database reference section of the documentation underneath ORM, underneath decorators. If you scroll down to the bottom of the right-hand side list, you'll start seeing before save, before create, before update, and so on. Uh, these are what we're going to be talking about here today because this will allow us to always make sure that the process happens whenever we're working with our model instead of having to manually make sure, okay, we've altered the user. Did they alter their password? Do we need to rehash it every single time that we go through that flow? We can just have this in a singular place directly on our model to make sure that it happens every single time. Now within this list, you'll specifically see before save, before create, before update, and so on. Uh, but there is an inverse side available to these. So you could also do after save, after create, after update, and so on. And that's noted if we go into that section down here at the bottom for each of those where it's available. And if you actually click on before save, you're going to get the exact code that we're going to be writing here today. So it's going to hook on to the model as a decorator for before save. And then we'll need to add it onto the actual model as a public async static method. Um, and then we can give it some name to give it some purpose within our model. In most cases, you'll want to use that to actually give a description of what exactly the hook is doing. Um, so in this case, you're hashing the password for the user. And then we'll take in the singular instance of the model itself. So in here, we have the user record of type user. And then specifically for the before save, this will run anytime prior to creating or updating a record. So it will take care of both the creation step and the update step. So if you were to update a record, this would run. And if you were to create a new record, this would run here as well. So making before save a perfect instance for our hash password example. If you only wanted something to run whenever you're recreating a record, that's where before create comes into play. And it looks very much the exact same. Everything's the exact same here. You have a public static. You can make this async if you needed to. Method on the model in itself takes in the instance of the record and you can do whatever you need to with that prior to actually creating the record. On the inverse side, if you just needed to run a hook before updating a record, maybe you needed to update a sum value on it before you actually persist it into the database. That's where before update will come into play and it looks the exact same as all the others. Then you have before delete, which you can run prior to deleting a record. In their example here, that would be clearing out any cached items you might have for the record. You could also do stuff with relationships here as well if you needed to. And then you start getting into query stuff, which we haven't quite covered querying yet, but so these would allow you to take the query statement and expand off of it prior to it actually executing. So this would be, you could add an additional where clause to it or a sort or something like that. So they have for this before find, which this will cover find, find by, or first. You have after find, which would be the inverse side of it. So you could alter the result after it's found and queried. So something like changing markdown to valid HTML. Before fetch and after fetch, which are going to very much be the exact same. Just instead of being on a single record, it will be on an array of various records. Before paginate and after paginate, which would be the exact same instance just across pagination records. So instead of being a list of items, this one will be a paginated result, but for the most part, you're going to be focusing on the exact same stuff here. So expanding on the query and then altering it after it's returned back for the after. Specifically today, we want to talk about the before save though, because this is the one that we need right now to hash our passwords. So if we were to actually run through an example of creating our user, so we have our users controller here. If we were to dive into this and add in a public async store method, we can go ahead and grab the request, set that to HTTP context contract. So let's do const data equals request only to grab specific properties off of our request body. We have a username and email and a password. We can do const user equals await user dot create data and then just return back that user. Give that a save. Let's bring this up to a route next. All right, so let's do route dot post users store users controller dot store as users store and accidentally put a space there at the beginning of users controller. And let's open up insomnia or you might be using postman or something like that. If you happen to have this open to topics store from our previous lesson, go ahead and switch that to user store. And then we need our data. So we have a user name. It's be something like test one, an email, test one at test.com, and then a password, which we could do as password zero one. Now, if we were to send this off, what you'll see whenever we get this back is the password is in plain text, which is no good. And if we were to inspect this in our database, 
even worse is it's plain text here as well. So you really never wanna do that. Uh, that's never something that you're going to want to purposely do within your project is have user passwords in plain text. That's just a no go. So that's where that before save hook comes into play on our user model. So let's jump into our user model and we can place this wherever, but I'm gonna go ahead and just place it down here at the bottom. We can do at before save, go ahead and give that a method of public static async, call this hash password. And this will take in our user of type user. And then we can use some of the additional options that Adonis.js has on the actual model instance to determine whether or not the password has been changed. And we can do that by doing if user dot, and this is within dirty. So the dollar sign dirty will hold any altered values on the model in itself. So if you change the username, the username will be within dirty. If you change the password, the password will be within dirty. So we could do if user dirty password, essentially saying if the password's been changed, uh, then we wanna perform some action. In this particular case, we wanna hash that password. So we would want to do user.password equals await hash, import that from the hash package dot hash, and it doesn't look like that's wanting to import from the right spot. So let's just scroll on up and we can do import hash from at IOC Adonis core, and then hash, scroll back down, and where we have our await hash dot, you wanna call make, and then provide it in the value. So that would be user dot password. So now we can give that a save and let's try that again. So let's go back into insomnia and let's change this to two. So test user two, test two at test.com. And let's go ahead and send this off. There we go. So that looks a lot better. So you can see we have our test two user and then the password is just gibberish. So it's, a so it's actually a hashed and salted value stored within our database. And we can verify that that's stored that way by jumping into our database here, giving that a refresh and you can see it does match that too. But there's one additional thing. So within Insomnia, we're returning back the actual password, meaning that it's being serialized. Meaning that if we were to provide this within our application to the JavaScript front end, it would be provided. We don't want our password to be available anywhere outside the safety of our backend, uh, whether it's in a hash form or not. So we can actually ensure that on our model itself as well. Um, so let's jump back into our model here. And underneath the column options, if we were to provide this an object, there is a set of serialize options. So you have serialize, serialize as a method, and then serialize as. Uh, we want that last one, serialize as, and then just provide it null. And by providing serialize as null, it will provide the password value in itself as null anytime that it's serialized. And serialization happens anytime that we provide the value outside of the scope of our Adonis.js backend. So if we provide it to the front end, if we return it as an API response, our password will be sent as null. And we can verify this by saving. Let's jump back into Insomnia, switch this up to test three, send this off. And you'll see that we didn't get our password back at all because its value is null. And whenever it serialized it, it kicked it out of the response body. So if we were to take a look back at tables plus here, give it a refresh, we do have that value. It did properly save the password within the database. Um, it's just, it's no longer sending it back with us as an actual value whenever we're kicking it back as a serialized response value. So there we go. We now have our user's password secured and safe within our database. And we have ensured that it's not going to escape the scope of our Adonis.js backend by providing serialized as, as well. So hopefully you enjoyed this lesson. Hope you learned something new. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below and subscribing for future lessons just like this one. Thank you all for watching everybody and I'll see you in the next one.